So I was going through my undergrad times in college and one of my advisors came to me and said, there's this genius scholar, this genius lady that went through the same thing you went through and she's transgender. So she gave me her memoir and she said it's called Crossing. And I read it and I thought, oh my gosh, this lady is transgender. She cares about the same things I care about. And honestly, her story sort of made me believe that I could you know, keep doing what I'd love to do and that there's a future for me being a trans woman. And I guess today I'm meeting her. So we'll get right into it. For, for people who might not be aware or might not understand, how would you define transgender? Well, wanting to be in the other gender. And there, it's a lot more common than you think. Um, pe people going from female to male and male to female are about equal. And it's about identity, who you are, not who you love. So it's not about sex. Sure, I think there's a big misconception with a lot of people that somehow they think sexual orientation has something to do with yeah, gender identity. And there are us straight people and then there's those queers. Right. And they're all the same. Yeah. And, and that's, that's just not true. I think that I'm lucky that I have, you know, family that's pretty open to everything I've gone through, you mm -hmm. know. In a lot of ways, I've had friends that weren't as lucky as I was, you know, that had parents that did not approve Absolutely. of their transition. And there are some, you know, I've, uh, you know, I feel I should help the community back. And so I've helped kids who, I mean, kids and teenagers who were thrown out of their households at age 14, sure, yeah. 16, thrown on the street. Well, I've met kids, their, you know, in, yeah. back in Atlanta that, you know, they were homeless by 14, 15, this is and it's horrible terrible. Because the only way they can earn their living is prostitution. Sure. And then they say, oh, well, you see, that's it. That, that's all you do. You only change your gender in order to do prostitution, yeah. which is nuts. I mean, I'm not a prostitute. Back when, I know when you transitioned, it wasn't always easy to have that perception. There was yeah. a lot less trans people visible in the media. There wasn't yeah. a, as big of an understanding as there is now. Even for when I transitioned, I'm sure it was a lot easier for me than it was when Well, you it was easier for you that it was for me, but it was easier for me than it was for Christine Jorgensen sure. or Jan Morris or any of those true pioneers. I would go to sleep when I was 11 or 12 praying that the following morning I wouldn't stutter and I would be a girl, wow. miraculously, both miraculously. And the following morning I, you know, I was still stuttering and still a boy. But then eventually I got half of my, at age 53, yeah. I got half of my prayer, which so bad. for an Episcopalian isn't too bad. I know the feeling. I remember when I was younger, I was always um, talking to my mom about how I wanted to be a girl. And you did? I did. She, we had a lot of conversations about that, and I would... Um, I, I would walk around the house in her high heels and stuff. and um, You mean when you were very small? When I was very small. Yeah. yeah, yeah very, right. When I was a small kid. Gender identity is surprisingly early decided on it by is. children. Yeah. By the time they're two, two years old, yeah. they're very clear. Why do you think it's so important for what you say, a free society, to allow people to explore their gender identity and to be able to transition and be who they are openly? Well, it's educational even for the straight people. Sure. It's an education in freedom that they see queers, no. unusual people, pe people with green hair, and instead of what we used to do 50 years ago, which is to punish them or segregate them or do bad things to them, right. now we've learned, oh, maybe we can be okay with that. Sure. And this applies to blacks, Hispanics, women, poor people, uh, handicapped people, all the people who were liberated yeah. after the 1960s. So it's not just about the trans people themselves, it's about their relatives, their friends, who are broadened, made more human by this experience. And so we, we bring what we want to be inside closer to who we are. And it's just so much healthier. Because when they're very far apart, oy, you're, you're, you're kind of disengaged from your soul. 
I, I describe myself as a postmodern, quantitative, literary, English professor, economist from Boston who lives in Chicago, who was once a man. Contradictions, I don't.